interviewing some major theorists in, edu in the education field. The topic for today's show is classroom behavior. Now let's welcome our first guest, Barris Frederick Skinner. <laughs> nice to meet you, Skinner. Oh, nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. It is a pleasure to have you with us. For those of you who aren't familiar with Skinner's famous theory on operant conditioning, it is the practice of how behavior can be shaped within classroom education. He is a strong believer that if you change the environment, you can change the individual. He has done imperative research on behavior with the use of lab rats and pigeons. His findings can be applied to classrooms throughout the world. Thank you for joining us today. Let's start with a question regarding your theory. Can you give us a quick overview of the operant conditioning theory? Operant conditioning is a process of changing behavior through reinforcement. I believe that I can shape one's behavior through positive and negative reinforcement. How did you come to this conclusion? Well, I came up with an experiment called the Skinner Box. As you can see, the Skinner Box consists of a food dispenser, a response lever, and an electrified grid, lights, and a loudspeaker, and a rat. The rat quickly learned that by hitting the lever, he would continue to receive food. As the rat learned this response, the rat continually pressed the lever to receive food, thus increasing the positive behavior. Comparatively, as I turned on the electric grid, the rat learned to press the lever to turn off the grid in order to receive food. So tell me, Skinner, how can this theory be related in a classroom setting? Well, let me show you. <laughs> Really good. I like the way you girls are coloring the lines. Good job. Here's a candy. Keep up the great work. right now and finish your work there. Get back to work. Great job. I'm really glad you guys haven't pulled out your cell phone. Guess what? Free time. Yay! Are you finished? Well, thank you. How thoughtful. Would you like a chocolate? Um, yeah, sure. Sorry, Sheldon, I almost sat in your spot. Did you? I didn't know this. Have a chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're here a lot now. Oh, am I talking too much? I'm sorry. Zip. Thank you. <laughs> chocolate? Let me take this in the hall. <laughs> You'll never guess who they got to replace you with. Okay. 
I know what you're doing. Really? Yes. You're using chocolates as positive reinforcement for what you consider correct behavior. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Chocolate? No, I don't know. Sheldon, you can't train my girlfriend like a lab rat. Actually, it turns out I can. Well, uh, you shouldn't. There's just no pleasing you, is there, Leonard? You weren't happy with my previous approach to dealing with her, so I decided to employ operant conditioning techniques, building on the works of Thorndike and B.F. Skinner. Yet by this time next week, I believe I can have her jumping out of a pool, balancing a beach ball on her nose. Oh, come on. You can't tell me that you're not intrigued about the possibility of building a better girlfriend. I'm not. Penny's qualities, both good and bad, are what make her who she is. <laughs> you mean like that high-pitched, irritating laugh? Yes. You wouldn't prefer a throaty chuckle? You're not changing how Penny laughs. No, that would be incongruous. Now, I was going to lower the whole voice to a more pleasing register. Ugh, <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. That girl is freaky! <laughs> Come again? Freaky. Freaky? Yeah, freaky. Have a chocolate. Thank you. Well, I'm going to make some warm milk and then turn in. I trust if you two are planning on engaging in amorous activities, you'll keep the decibel level to a minimum? Of course. Thank you. Mm. These are so good. Mm. Unbelievable. 